With all the media coverage and scrutiny over their every move, F1 drivers rarely let their hair down. But they are only human after all. Over the years, there have been numerous run-ins with the law, shenanigans with rental cars, and you wouldn't believe what Shumi did during the celebrations of his sixth title. To put things into context, what Michael Schumacher did raises more eyebrows than his brother throwing a TV through a window. But more on that later. Let's start things off gently, I think. Apparently, being able to navigate your way seriously fast around a track automatically makes you immune from general civilian road rules. In 2012, Sergio Perez was detained by Mexican authorities for allegedly driving without a valid license. You would have thought the police would have gathered he had one. He was stopped at a routine traffic checkpoint, where it was discovered that his license had expired. Perez faced a fine and legal consequences for the incident. A lot of the drivers also seem to be a little confused about speed limits. Some don't presume to know there are any. There have been numerous instances where the guys have been caught speeding off the track. Sebastian Vettel had an unexpected counter with the law in 2019 while driving in Switzerland. Vettel's love for speed on the racetrack seemed to spill over onto the public roads, as he was caught exceeding the legal speed limit. The incident led to legal consequences, and Vettel found himself facing the revocation of his driving license as a result. This temporary suspension meant that Vettel was unable to legally drive for a specified period. In addition to the license suspension, Vettel was also required to pay a fine, further highlighting the seriousness of the offense. The specific duration of the license suspension and the amount of the fine would have been determined based on the severity of Vettel's speeding violation and the relevant traffic laws in Switzerland. Ex-rival Hamilton found himself on the wrong side of the law in 2007 when he was slapped with a fine for reckless driving in France. The incident unfolded when he was caught exceeding the speed limit, resulting in legal consequences. The repercussions of his actions extended beyond the legal realm, as Hamilton's behavior drew disapproval and public backlash. This wasn't the only time the Brit faced frowns. In 2017, Hamilton faced a barrage of disapproval for a seemingly innocuous act. He took to Instagram to share a video, unwittingly thrusting himself into a storm of controversy. The video depicted Hamilton riding a motorcycle in New Zealand, an act that violated team regulations. The breach of these regulations attracted backlash from fans, pundits, and the wider public, who questioned his judgment and adherence to professional conduct. This was not the only incident in which Hamilton's social media actively generated controversy. The year 2020 saw the world grappling with COVID-19 pandemic, and Hamilton's online presence once again came under scrutiny. He found himself embroiled in a different kind of controversy, as he shared misinformation regarding COVID-19 vaccines across his various social media platforms. This action sparked a significant backlash, with calls for Hamilton to exercise greater responsibility and caution when utilizing his influential platform. Critics argued that with great influence comes a great responsibility to disseminate accurate and trustworthy information, especially during a global health crisis. Hammer time continued to abound, and the driver found himself involved in a high-profile car crash in Monaco, just days before the Brazilian Grand Prix. In the early hours of the Tuesday, Hamilton's 1.5 million pound Pagani Zonda collided with three parked cars, causing significant damage. The crash occurred as Hamilton lost control of his vehicle, with a police spokesperson attributing the incident to a slip of his foot on the brake and clutch pedals, ruling out alcohol as a contributing factor. Upon arriving in Brazil for the upcoming race, Hamilton attributed the accident to a combination of factors. He admitted to a lack of sleep due to heavy partying and claimed to be suffering from a fever at the time of the incident. Hamilton took to social media to address the situation, expressing his awareness that some individuals may try to exploit the circumstances for personal gain, but asserting that it was ultimately nobody's business. All this, and we haven't even got to any of the driver's partying exploits. But wait, there is more on the goat. In an apparent attempt to move on swiftly from a challenging year, Lewis Hamilton had been spotted in 2022, pushing a stunning Nissan Skyline R34 GTR to its limits during a visit to Japan. He shared a meticulously edited video on social media, accompanied by the caption, 
I typically prefer driving on track, but I occasionally make exceptions. The video showcases Hamilton performing donuts in an abandoned car park, resulting in smoke billowing up the transmission tunnel and filling the interior of the car, much to Hamilton's delight. The video quickly garnered over 1.5 million likes, with many eager for more similar content from the rising star. However, Hamilton's actions have now come under scrutiny due to one significant issue. It has been revealed that the skyline he drove was, in fact, a rental vehicle. According to Nori Yaro, a prominent influencer residing in Japan, the car Hamilton used belonged to Omashiro Rent-A-Car, who are reportedly displeased with the Mercedes driver. Unsurprisingly, the rental company did not grant Hamilton permission to drive the vehicle in the manner that he did, and they've since shared the driver's video on Instagram along with their own commentary. We strictly prohibit this type of driving. This is an unacceptable act done without our authorization," expressed the rental company in response to Hamilton's video. When there's intense pressure to perform, there naturally seems to be just as much need to release said pressure. And when you've got big bucks to party with, things can easily get a little out of hand. In his book, The Mechanic, Mark Elvis Priestley elaborates on the partying scene for the F1 paddock. He tantalizingly mentions that, on one occasion, an F1 driver was dangled out of the window of a moving car, by accidentally knocking over someone else's line of cocaine. Nightclub brawls seem to be a thing among the drivers in particular. Apparently, there needs to be an outlet for all that pent-up aggression. Nelson Piquet Jr., the Brazilian F1 driver, faced scrutiny and legal consequences for his off-track behavior. In 2013, he was allegedly involved in a highly publicized street fight in Brazil, leading to his arrest. The incident attracted significant media attention and sparked speculation about the circumstances and individuals involved. PK Jr.'s legal situation unfolded according to the Brazilian legal system, with specific charges brought against him. Similarly, Eddie Irvine found himself embroiled in a legal debacle in 2002 that momentarily cast a shadow on his racing career. Irvine's encounter with trouble took place during a fateful night at a nightclub in Milan, Italy. Reports emerged of a physical altercation between Irvine and his group of friends and another party, resulting in injuries. The incident attracted the attention of the authorities, and Irvine was subsequently questioned by the police. Then, in 2011, during a nightclub gathering, Adrian Suttil got into an altercation with Eric Lux, who at the time was the CEO of Jenny Capital, the company that owned the Renault Formula One team. The confrontation escalated, and Suttil reportedly attacked Lux with a broken champagne glass, causing injury. As a result of the incident, legal action was taken against Suttil. He faced charges of grievous bodily harm, which is a very serious offense. The legal proceedings examined the details of the altercation and determined the appropriate consequences for Suttil's action. But you won't believe the exploits of our last driver. It's Shumi that really has our eyebrows raised. In 2003, after Michael Schumacher secured his sixth Formula One World Championship title by winning the Japanese Grand Prix, it was a significant achievement in his career, and the celebrations that followed became quite memorable. After the race, the festivities unfolded in the garage area belonging to the Toyota team. Michael's brother, Ralph Schumacher, who was driving for the Williams team at the time, played a key role in organizing the celebrations and securing the location for the party. Despite being a rival team's garage, the Toyota team management agreed to host the post-race celebrations for the newly crowned champion and his team. As the celebrations gained momentum, the atmosphere grew more vibrant and energetic. Reports and eyewitness accounts describe the scene as a raucous affair. The Schumacher brothers, along with fellow drivers and members of their respective teams, indulged in spirited revelry. According to accounts, the Schumacher brothers were responsible for some of the more notable antics during the celebrations. Ralph Schumacher reportedly threw a television set out of a window, adding to the frenzy. Meanwhile, Michael Schumacher, known for his outgoing personality, decided to climb onto a forklift truck while under the influence, knocking over a fridge in the process. Photographs emerged of the event, showing Michael Schumacher wearing a shirt stained with drinks, exemplifying the festive and carefree atmosphere of the night. The event has since become a part of Formula One lore, 
often remembered as a testament to the competitive spirit, camaraderie, and joy that can be found within the sport, even after intense on-track battles. Despite the off-track behavior, we still love them.